This is Radio Free Hillsdale, 101.7 FM. I'm Scott Bertram, joined this morning by State Senator Mike Shirky. Senator, how are you doing? I'm great, Scott. Thanks for having me on again. I appreciate the access to your, uh, your audience and to you. And a pretty good start to uh, 2017 for you thus far? Uh, so far, so good. We haven't uh, passed any legislation that would be anti-economic uh, development, anti-freedom yet. Well, that's a good start to 2017. Now, now can you guarantee that's going to keep uh, that's going to stay the same way throughout the year? I wish I could. <laughs> I can't make all those calls. Well, I uh, wanted to spend some time this morning discussing uh, what might happen here in in 2017. You guys were uh, in session earlier this month, our largely largely perfunctory session, so uh, not a lot getting done. But you've got uh, what 43 new members in, in the House. Uh, I'm not sure how many new members are in the in the Senate necessarily, but. Well, there's only- really only one new member. We were, this was uh, the off cycle for the Senate. Okay. So we got one new member that replaced uh, one senator, but otherwise it's, it's the same. So what are you looking most forward to it, uh, to addressing in 2017? Well, my specific uh, goals are related to the both the, the uh, re-engineering, I call it the reboot of Healthy Michigan, and to the opioid abuse and painkiller abuse that uh, we, we're suffering in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Those can be my, personally, my two uh, primary focuses, at least for the first six months of 2017. And for people who perhaps, um, well, I, I would imagine a lot of our audience have not uh, served in government in, in <laughs> either in, in office or, or, or in an office of a sitting member, what, what, is, it, what is the process like to, to, to take a, an issue like you just mentioned and try to work and put together the, this piece of legislation that might actually get to the governor's desk eventually. What how, what goes into that? Well, that's a good question. I appreciate the opportunity to explain it. For first of all, it, it helps to be privileged to have uh, this, the uh, an accompanying and a, uh, a chairmanship, and so me being uh, allowed to, and the privilege to have uh, to serve as the chair of health policy for the Senate. It gives me a platform that's a little easier to advance advance the legislation. Mm-hmm. And this is not, frankly, about legislation. It's about identifying the problems uh, at, at the root cause. And uh, oftentimes, one of my biggest frustrations, Scott, is that we we listen to the media. We could be even listening uh, to constituents out in the field, and we hear we hear problems, but they're really uh, symptoms of problems, and, sim- and they're not root cause, and so right. we're too quick to offer <coughs> legislative solutions when, in fact, the legislative solution is for a, a uh, symptom of a problem, not the root cause of the problem. So let's, just, let's talk about opioid abuse for a moment. There's a lot of disparate, meaning broad groups across the state, frankly across the nation, that are working on uh, their own viewpoint, looking through their own filter, through their own lens. On, uh, on opioid abuse, all with a good intention, but there's very little coordination going on as to so what can we really do to bend the curve in, in, uh, and reduce the uh, access to and the abuse of uh, these drugs. And so what we're, we're going to be focusing on is, is we actually have identified seven, I think eight maybe now, mm-hmm. different organizations or different groups of organizations that are all working independently on opioid abuse, one including the Governor's Commission that he appointed back in 2015, and then, then trying to, trying to frankly, paint a picture of what, are those, what does that really look like in all those efforts, and then uh, seeing <clears throat> where we can identify root causes and opportunities for where appropriate legislative action uh, may be needed. I'll give you an example. Um, right now, uh, the ability for consumers to return unused prescriptions mm-hmm. is not convenient. And uh, I've been, we've been focusing exclusively on this for the last couple of weeks, even through the holiday break, trying to research what are the obstacles prohibiting, for instance, pharmacies, every pharmacy, from having a drop-off box with no questions asked, uh, not creating a burden for pharmacies. In other words, they don't have to record it, uh, take inventory of it, anything. Right. And then partner with local law enforcement, and I, my hope would be with the, with the county sheriffs, and saying that they would then be authorized to, on, a, on a routine basis, uh, when it's convenient, uh, they would be secured uh, devices, pick them up, take them in the incinerator, and get rid of them. 
uh, and just to make it make it so that it's very easy to uh, to do that and not have to fill out any paperwork, not have to have a pharmacist record what's being delivered, you know, being returned and so forth. That's just an example of the kinds of things that we're going to be uh, proposing and then making sure there are not any statutory obstacles to accomplishing that. Hmm. State Senator Mike Shirky is with us, serving Michigan's 16th district, Branch, Hillsdale, Jackson counties. Find him online, SenatorMikeShirky.com. I'm Scott Bertram with you, Radio Free Hillsdale, 101.7 FM. Something else that might get addressed in 2017, and this is, you know, I'm a relatively new Michigan resident, uh, just about a year at this point. And one of the best things about uh, coming to Michigan was was the property taxes coming from Illinois, which is super high, and, and here they're far more reasonable. Uh, but then I have to look at the other side of the coin, which is, um, as you might guess, auto insurance rates. And Michigan has the, the highest auto insurance rates in the country, the, the no-fault auto insurance system, the only one in the country that way. It's been something that's been attempted for years. There was a potential deal late in the last session. It is is uh, auto insurance reform pot- uh, po- possible in 2017? I think that there's a very high probability that we will have measurable and material reform in our auto insurance uh, uh, statutes in 2017. Scott, you are correct in uh, asserting that we have some of the highest auto insurance rates in the nation. Uh, but that should also be accompanied by we have the best by a long way uh, coverage uh, for uh, catastrophic mm-hmm. uh, injuries as a result of uh, auto uh, accidents and so forth. And so there's a, there's a, we have to recognize that we can make those, tre- we can make those changes, but uh, there will be a dramatic effect on uh, the kinds of coverages that we currently enjoy. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not making an opinion on whether or not we, the coverages that we currently enjoy are uh, uh, good, bad, uh, excessive, or otherwise. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that there is going to be a trade-off. Right. That. And um, so, you know, right now, if you, uh, your, you, your family have a have an accident in Michigan, and God forbid somebody gets, you know, catastrophically injured, maybe even for life, uh, our system basically covers it, and uh, it was very little out of pocket cost, and that's the reason why it's so expensive, and it is, it is a premium. There's no cap on how, what uh, <clears throat> people can can, can collect mm-hmm. on a legitimate auto uh, accident via the auto insurance, uh, versus the next large, the next state that has a cap is $50,000, that's uh, New York State. So you can see there goes from 50000 to unlimited is the gap there. So we have a very generous, very attractive system, but it's also very expensive. Hmm. And um, there have been a lot of industries that have been built around that system, and I think it's legitimate to, to query whether or not some of those industries are, are completely necessary. For instance, Oakland County in Michigan has more brain, protein brain uh, trauma uh, treatment centers than any other county in the nation. Hmm. And so, it, you know, it's, it's this, our auto insurance uh, coverage has, cr- has created that, that, uh, that little industry, which yeah. is not so little anymore. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, there's always, you know, people are pretty creative, so they find ways to uh, extract, you know, business out of opportunities, and this is, I think, a legitimate one for us to, to question. Senator Mike Shirky with us from Michigan's 16th Senate District here on Radio Free Hillsdale, 101.7 FM. There's a uh, proposal getting a lot of attention from uh, one of your fellow Republican senators, Jack Brandenburg, um, that eventually would repeal in total the state's uh, income tax. There are a couple of states that are able to do this. Uh, Senator Brandenburg says it's this is meant to get a conversation started about whether or not this might be even possible for a state like Michigan. What do you think of that proposal? Is it something that might be, again, feasible for a state like Michigan to do eventually? So this is a perfect example of what I started our conversation about. Uh, <laughs> and, that, and that is, you know, uh, localized optimization, in other words, somebody advancing an idea mm-hmm. uh, without first kind of uh, describing what's the problem we're trying to solve. To me, the problem we're trying to solve is how can we reduce Michigan's overall tax burden on taxpayers. Mm-hmm. And whether or not eliminating income tax is the best solution or a solution in that scenario 
is something that we should evaluate. But looking through a peephole and saying, you know what, let's, there's other states that don't have uh, income tax, let's just get rid of ours, uh, really is looking at a, uh, symptoms of problems and not, not looking at you know, the, what, the, what the real opportunity is. And you, like you said, uh, you came from Illinois where your property taxes were right. uh, astronomical. Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> I'm a full supporter of the Brandenburg notion that it, it, it will cause us to have a conversation. But the conversation, in my mind, and I've spent, shared, with, shared this with uh, Senator Brandenburg, the conversation should start with what are we trying to accomplish, mm-hmm. not how do we eliminate income tax. Because... It's, it, the income tax represents, I don't know, 80% of our general fund right. now. Right, And uh, even though all of us would, would agree that we government spends more money than it should, I think everybody would also agree that we probably can't eliminate 80% of the services <laughs> the general fund uh, currently provides support. So um, <clears throat> this is like, it's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. State Senator Mike Shirky, before we let you go, one area that it appears there's some uh, bipartisan support and something certainly will get done this year is in the area of, of, of beefing up and improving job training programs around the state. What might that look like? I'm not sure what uh, the details of that are going to be. And I think, but I will tell you this, and this is something I feel very strongly about, the solution to training or the gap in training should be focused primarily on the private sector, not on the government sector. And I am proud to report that in the 16th Senate District, uh, especially in Jackson County, but it's now leaking into Hillsdale County and Branch County, there are some very effective private industry-driven training programs identifying where the needs are and being implemented by a combination of the schools that are already in place plus the private business community Mm -hmm. that uh, I think are far better solutions than us decided and then we have to do it at the, gov- at the government level. Government should, should uh, rightfully so, be evaluating what obstacles we create in statute for, to accomplishing those things, but uh, I don't think it should be a government program. It should be government inspired, maybe, <laughs> uh, but and enabled, but uh, it should be primarily driven by the private sector. That is Senator Mike Shirky. Find him online, SenatorMikeShirky.com. He's on Facebook as well. Look for Mike Shirky, and uh, he'll join us again throughout the year of 2017. Senator, I hope you've had a great start to the year. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Scott, I appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you in a couple weeks.